Welcome to the world of biohacking. Let's all start with an experiment. Please place your fingers in your neck, where you can feel your heartbeat. And for the next 10 seconds, I want you to count the number of heartbeats. Ready, team? Here we go. Now multiply that number by six. That's your heart rate. The number of beats per minute. But still, that's a little rough, such an estimate. I mean, I know that my heart rate at the moment is 84 beats per minute, which is 20 beats higher than yesterday and 1.06 times higher than my monthly average. Maybe that's because I'm nervous. <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with the place I'm in. You can use technology to measure all kinds of things in life. For example, I wear a ring. And this ring does not only measure my body temperature, but it also measures my sleep quality. And besides this ring, I wear a headband. And this headband measures my brain waves. But besides using technology to track, measure, and monitor things in your life, you can also use it to alter and improve. And that's called biohacking. To give you two examples. In the morning, I wear these glasses, which work with blue light therapy, give me more energy in the morning. And sometimes I'm going to train with this mask. It reduces the amount of oxygen going into my lungs and it helps me to improve my condition. But besides wearing technology, on our body, you can also wear them in your body. That's the most extreme form of biohacking. So, that's what I did. I implanted a little chip right here in my left hand between my thumb and my index finger. And at the moment, this chip is not measuring anything. So for fun, I decided to put my business card on it. I use it to unlock my smartphone, and at the moment, I put my Bitcoin wallet on it. So you might say that my hand is very valuable at this moment. And all this technology makes life so much easier. And I would like to call it instant life. Everything goes seamless and without a an hassle. You may also experience these advantages. On the train back home, you use an app on your smartphone to put the heat on. So when you get at your house, it's nice and warm. When you visit a city you have never been before, you use an app on your smartphone to show you the way. And maybe in the future, instead of driving yourself, you get outside of your house and there's a self-driving car waiting for you, which will get you to your destination while you sit in the back and watch a series on Netflix. And a lot of these innovations come from places like this, universities of technology, so thank you for that. And yes, I want to have an app to use to measure and measure the, the heating in my house. And I want a self-driving car. But what I really want is to control my own body, my own health. So I decided to become a human guinea pig. Why? Because I wanted to know my body. Because, okay, I will admit it, I like sh new shiny things and gadgets. But also because I want to upgrade myself. So I started tracking my steps, my stairs, my sleep, my stress. And in the last five years, I moved on to, by doing all kinds of personal experiments. I, for example, I did some blood tests. I did an analysis of my hormones. I sequenced my genome. I made an analysis of my microbiome. 
Yes, that's true. I made an analysis of my poop. I tried all kinds of diets, vegan, raw vegan, vegetarian, paleo, ketogenic, not eating for five days. I tweaked my morning and evening ritual. For example, doing breathing exercises. And I tried all kinds of pills and supplements to become better, healthier, and stronger. And today, I want to share with you my insights. What are the lessons I learned after doing this extensive amount of personal experiments? The third insight is that technology gives us the promise of shortcuts. Shortcuts to our health. Well, sorry to disappoint you. Our bodies and brains evolved over thousands of years. And gadgets and trackers, they do not improve our health directly. You still need to do the work. If you want to be stronger, you need to go to the gym and lift some weights. If you want to be faster, you need to go outside and run. And if you want to lose weight, you have to change your diet and eat less. The second insight is that technology is new. But I came to the realization that actually the best habits are old habits. For example, practicing daily meditation, which is founded in ancient India, helped me to gain more focus and attention. Saying a prayer before dinner is part of Christian religion. And although I'm not religious, taking a moment before I'm going to eat helps to relax the digestive system. And going into a squat, which is very common in Asian and African cultures, I did it for 30 days for 30 minutes, and it really improved my hip flexibility and some of the back issues I had. And now you probably think, well, Peter, that's not a surprise. Of course, the best habits were tested by thousands of people. They evolved, they stood the test of time. Well, we as mankind, we tried a lot of things. For example, in the 1500s, it was legally required for physicians in Europe to look at their patient's horoscope before treatment. <laughs> at the end of the 19th century, it was believed that smoking was an effective cure for asthma. <laughs> and at the beginning of the 20th century, Dr. Voronov did surgery on men, and he believed his surgery would halt or even reverse human aging. So what did he do? He implanted monkey testicles in a man. And if you're curious, it was near the scrotum. And I'm pretty sure no one here is willing to get that last habit a second chance. <laughs> the third insight. Technology gives us the impression that everything goes smooth and without any problems. But I found out that actually the best habits, they involve a little bit of pain a little bit of suffering, a little bit of discomfort. For example, fasting, not eating for a couple of days, can serve as a cleanse for your body. By the way, if you are interested, you should do it under medical supervision. A short burst of cold, for example, taking a cold shower or go ice swimming. The Russians believe that ice swimming is like gymnastics for your lymphatic system. And your lymphatic system is involved in getting rid of toxins and other waste products in your body. And the third example is abstinence. Abstinence helped me to break stuck habits. For example, 30 days without coffee. 30 days without alcohol. 30 days without social media. 30 days without a smartphone. And yes, even 30 days without having an orgasm or ejaculation. So does that mean we have to throw away all our technology? No. I believe in synergy. At this moment, these trackers and devices, they do not offer a real shortcut to your health. You still need to do the work yourself. So, the recipe for a long and healthy life may be within these old habits, which can be 
I'm sorry to tell you, a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, sorry. I get a notification on my smartwatch that my heart rate has gone out of whack for the last nine minutes and 31 seconds. And actually it tells me it's time to do my daily ritual of meditation. You're still here? Oh, thank you.